Oh, it actually looks fantastic, like right there. Yeah, let me know if you need me to like do anything. I don't know. Yeah, we'll plug it in right now so that it doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah, I got a ton of battery right now, so. 98 percent sure that video camera thing on and the streaming and all that video is it not long enough would actually be a better angle but I can sit right up there. Yeah. 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 All right. Sorry about the delay. Uh, we did. I had a buddy who helped me set up the uh, streaming so that we can broadcast the event tonight. Um, I don't have a laptop, so there's not going to be anything extra special coming for me tonight. Mm -hmm. But this is the Arizona WordPress Mark Scottsdale meetup. I recognize most of you, so I expect all of you are in the right place. Um, we are have one of our presenters uh, dropped up tonight, so the second half of our meetup will be kind of open forum. So I hope you brought questions. If you didn't, I will show you at random something from WordPress for a half an hour, and you can ask me questions about that. Um, WordPress 4 is coming out soon. We can discuss that. I've been in it quite a bit, so if you have questions about the release or uh, want to know more about it, we can, we can discuss that too. Uh, if you are planning on tweeting tonight, please do. Uh, make sure you hashtag WPAP um, so that everyone else that's following the stream can follow along. If you need Wi-Fi, the login information has been up here for the last half hour. Hopefully you have it by now. Um, those are really the only slides that I have. We will go around the room and uh, meet everyone, and then, and then he's got a bunch of slides. With us. Um, this is Scott. <laughs> I added another. <laughs> and we'll get Scott up here before he adds any more slides. Um, we'll start in the back of the room. Uh, just let me know your name and maybe why you came to the meetup tonight, uh, or something interesting about yourself. Oh, well, my name's Madison, and I'm here with um, Peter Lerner. I'm not going to say I'm only saying that. Hi, I'm Jessica Packard. Um, I'm the graphic designer. Um, traditionally, a you know, format, but you know, the last couple of years, I've been getting into more designing to the web and doing WordPress and everything, so I've been kind of like learning that format a little bit more. Still not an expert, so I'm here to kind of like learn and absorb all the information. Something interesting about myself is I'm also a circus and fire here. Fire? Yeah, like you breathe in. Fire spinning, toy, fire eating and flushing. Oh, let's see you do it. <laughs> you know, like I <laughs> <laughs> not buy a ticket. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Play. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start your own meetup. <laughs> I, uh, I actually uh, run a food truck here in Phoenix what? that I help start, and we have a meetup for like food classes and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, that, that is very interesting. <laughs> 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 Mark Ritter, I do local business marketing, and I cannot do a hoop anymore. You do a hoop. We'll just keep coming up this time. I'm Mark. I like to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob Smith, I work on our own company website. He is a meetup veteran. <laughs> I'm Brandon. I'm the sign. I just started building a couple sites. My name is Scott. I run a software development company called Luminary Web Strategy. Uh, we make software as well as WordPress websites. Um, um, I haven't had coffee since I was 15. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to just sign your bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm uh, be fine. And they told me it was ladies' night, and I'm fucking free. So. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we'll go to the bathroom here. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I, I, I'm uh, Brian. I do uh, work as a building. <laughs> also, a meetup veteran. Oh, I'm Ruth Ann Monty. I um, am a writer. I have a couple of times from communications and uh, like, so some of what I can write for it. So anyone's looking for a writer, I'm here and I have all these business cards. I have to a couple of short jobs to do with us which we can do in the news. A big interesting topic is um, as of tomorrow morning, I will be the mother of a teenager. And I'm very yeah. frightened. Nice. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really sweet little boy for a long time. Oh, he's a boy. He's, and a <laughs> <laughs> He's like a snarling mass of hair. <laughs> All right. I'm Dan. I'm, Dan. I'm the uh, director of interactive development at the Home Tomorrow Sports News. Um, I've been here to the World Cup since probably 2010. All of our sites are for the past time down here. I'm uh, three classes away from my master's certificate in this class of the back. Great. How, how is it? It's great. Really great. Very intense. Covers everything you can get to do. It's like a new thing. 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 Great. Okay. Thank you. I'm George Lerner. Uh, I'm a WordPress developer and troubleshooter. And, uh, oh, I've just spent the last two days. Troubleshooting some stuff with WordPress on Windows IIS <laughs> is painful. Keep away, keep away, do yourself a favor. Um, and I'm looking for the work in WordPress development and troubleshooting. Hi, I'm Raquel, and I'm a partner and owner of a WordPress company called Modifest. It was called Codel. And we've been doing that for like 12 years. In uh, something interesting is that we're actually very involved with the WordPress community across the nation. We just decided we should probably be very involved with the WordPress community in our local um, area. So, um, so that's our mission. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I co run Free Up Web Studio, and uh, we're a WordPress shop. What's that? Okay. I'm also a co organizer of the meetup. <laughs> Oh, me? Oh, I know most of you by name. But, uh, I'm Seth Carstens. I'm a WordPress evangelist. Um, I do a lot of WordPress coding, um, but I'm actually moving away from it. Uh, I'm moving towards more like theory and strategic structure and setup. Um, so that's what I do now. I also now work from home, which is awesome. Um, something interesting about me. Um, I found out through Twitter that somebody else that I know from across the United States likes anime. Uh, so that was interesting. And she has pink hair. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> I do not. I'm not quite that much of a, of a fan. Um, but I enjoy watching. So you just never know who else but that's about. Um, So let's take a look at what we're doing tonight. Mm. 
Good idea. How about even better, I go to our own website. And just click the link. Sorry, I'm usually more organized. Um, if any of you are interested in being in the um, Arizona WordPress business directory, please get in contact with me. I will post the listing. It does not cost anything. It's completely free. So if you have a WordPress and it's related, if you have a business and it's related to WordPress, um, please let me know. Who manages that kind of science? Copy and paste on the wall. Okay. Uh, well, for those of you that arrived at 6, there was Q&A. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about tonight is speeding up your website with Cloudflare, uh, and Scott is going to give his presentation on that. Um, Scott is a, what, a Cloudflare certified partner. certified partner. So we have a Cloudflare certified partner in there. I feel very honored. Um, then we'll have our normal idea swap, where we just like if you ran into something cool, um, doesn't necessarily even have to be related to WordPress. It could be like, I don't know, a project management system that is better than basic or something like that. Um, so we'll do the idea swap after that. And then topic two is going to be WP Smush It. And I can talk a little bit about image compression and, and what you should do with images on your website. But the presenter was unable to attend tonight. Um, and then we'll do a call for topics at the end, our general. Uh, networking, um, and then I will kind of chew you all out the door around 8.30. And we all go over to K. O'Donnell's, which is sort of far down the street, all of three minutes away. Um, and we usually end up with 12 to 15 people. Um, and you don't have to talk to them to go there and talk about our kids or our friends or friends or whatever. Um, but you're welcome to come network up with us afterwards. It's usually a great time. We end up like the best turnout for KO's after the last month's meeting. Um, we had to put like five or six tables together to talk to me. That's showing we've had. So I encourage you all to go to that. It's a great way to meet the yeah. yeah. Um, so do more community show up to that this year right here? Or will it be everyone? It'll just be people okay. in this room that have the time to sure. so go over and see after party. <laughs> it is. Um, it's the same thing, right? Like everyone goes to the channel meet up, and then everybody goes to the same thing. That's my thing. That was great. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing tonight. Oh, uh, I guess to be a good organizer, I should tell you that we are looking for a WordCamp um, lead. So if you have any interest in there being a WordCamp 2015, um, I would love to hear from you because if we don't find a lead, there won't be a WordCamp next year. And that would make me sad. Is that a full time deal? Like a, a job? No. Yeah. Well, kind of. It is a, <laughs> a non profit <laughs> conference, so you will not make any money from it. Um, but it is a fantastic event. I've been involved for the last three or four years now um, as an organizer. And uh, it's great for the local community. Um, and I don't know, people expect it. Like when People here, there's not going to be a word camp. They're going to be like, really? How is that possible? Um, last year, we had something like 700 people at the camp. So it's an enormous conference and a great undertaking. Um, but I do it every year because I always get more from it than I put in. So, um, if you have any interest in helping, even if you're uh, just interested in, in helping with word camp, but you're not interested in being a lead, uh, please do get in contact with me. So I'll help you. Um, without further ado, why don't we get Scott to bring up his laptop and uh, he can introduce us to Cloudflare. Just a second. 
second it is set up for you. So, how many people have heard of Cloudflare? Oh, I'm being used to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, even if um, it seems like a lot of you have heard of it, I don't know how many of you have installed it or are using it on your website. Okay. So, we can talk about how to install it, what it is, and why you should use it, and um, what tweaks are necessary to make sure that you're getting the best parts of it, while as well not hindering your website by actually having it installed. So, first of all, who's this guy? So I'm the owner of Luminary Web Strategies. Uh, we make WordPress websites as well as regular software. So we're actually working on a accounting system for Fern City. Um, and we have a few other projects that are not WordPress related, but um, we love WordPress just because fun about WordPress, right? <laughs> so um, we are a Cloudflare, Cloudflare certified partner. It means that a lot of our customers have Cloudflare, and for the most part, we know what we're doing when we install it. Um, one of our clients gets about 200 thousands pages per day, and all of those go through Cloudflare. Um, I might actually show all the analytics for that website, just because it's kind of cool to see. Actually, first of all, Google Analytics real time, you can see like a thousand people on that website in a moment. But the other thing is Cloudflare, you can see how many hackers are trying to get into that website, how many regular people are trying to access it, and some of the other problems that we run into because we've got that many people trying to get on it at any moment. Um, that's my Twitter handle. Um, apparently, I think according to Mark about random things rather than actual uh, WordPress stuff. Um, <laughs> so I am a real human being. So if you follow me, I'm a real human being. Um, so this is the WordPress. Or sorry, uh, the Cloudflare website. Um, honestly, the best description is the video that they have on their homepage. So I'm just going to go ahead and show that. I know. Well, and then I'll. I'll yeah. And of course, we won't get any audio. <laughs> You have to change your audio settings again. Not Mac. Switching. Let me set up. Let's just go with Python. You know what you're up against. You get spam, hacked, and crawled. You get popular, which is awesome but can handle the surge in traffic, which is not awesome. If your server goes offline, often at the worst possible time, search engines punish you when your site loads slow. You then feel that uneasy feeling about some of your visitors. Are they friendly? Are they the embodiment of pure evil? How can you know? Feeling alone? The big guys have their abuse teams and extensive solutions. They're covered. With Cloudflare, you can be covered too. Cloudflare is a community of webmasters just like you. Our goal is to give you access to the resources previously reserved only for the biggest sites. Cloudflare protects your site by pulling the knowledge of hundreds of webmasters into a virtual cloud in its use team, like a neighborhood watch. If a hacker or spammer is spotted on one site, Cloudflare instantly responds to four feet hack. Cloudflare uses the size of its community to get access to the fastest internet routes and fast type. Cloudflare speeds up your whole website by distributing its content across the web. This also means that Cloudflare can keep it online even if your server goes down. Cloudflare is easy to use and quick to set up. No hardware, no software. You keep your existing hosting provider and don't need to change your code. Any site with its own domain can be up and running in less than five minutes. The internet is great because of millions of webmasters just like you. Time to band together. Join us. So they call it a community. I don't really actually like that approach. Um, what they do, and I'll talk more about how it works, but they really pool all the information of visitors that are hitting your website, and then they can use that information to figure out who's a bad guy, who's a bad or who's a good guy, and then block or allow certain people to have their access to the website based off that. So, Cloudflare, first and foremost, uh, it's a content delivery network. So that means that when you actually upload an image to your website, they'll copy that onto all of the servers that they have throughout the web. And when somebody tries to access your website, they'll pull, pull that version of the image rather than pulling the, the version that's on your server. That saves you bandwidth, it makes it so there's less processing on the server, and it makes it so everything shows up a lot faster. Um, and they do a lot of other things, and they have a lot of other options to make it so your website shows up faster as a speed boost. So one thing that uh, is an option, and I'll go through all the different options, um, is something called Rocket Loader. 
and it makes it so all of that code in JavaScript is actually launched into just one file that is loaded at the end of your uh, website. So instead of going through all the different JavaScript files, it just has one that's really, really small and pushes that out. makes your website a lot faster. However, and I'll talk about nuances as well, um, sometimes that can result in really bad things happening on your website. So for example, the one that gets about 100 to 200,000 page views per day, they had Rocket Loader on for a little while, or I guess I can say that I turned it on. Whenever you access the website, the page would load, and then it would refresh, and then show again. So every single time that you went on, for some reason that Rocket Loader was trying to make it so that it showed the page all over again. So that's where it's really important to go through, if you are seeing issues once you install Cloudflare, to kind of figure out which of the different options are messing up your website. It could be Rocket Loader, it could be a bunch of different options that they have. The other thing is security. So just like I was saying before, if let's just say there's a group of hackers that are going around with certain IP addresses and trying to get into the WordPress admin dashboard um, or whatever else it may be, spammers, they actually have a whole entire database of all the IP addresses um, that are doing that kind of thing. And then that way if they try to access your website and you're protected by Cloudflare, they're not able to get on or they have a little capture that they have to fill out before they open. Okay, so Cloudflare is free. They do have plans, and the biggest down for the biggest thing with their free plan is that you can't have it activated on an SSL certificate uh, domain. So let's just say if you have you have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash mydomain.com, you can't actually have all these optimizations and the SSL certificate at the same time um, unless you're on their free plan. You can make it so you, let's just say you have like a specific, this is kind of a, I don't know how nerdy we'll get. You have a specific subdomain that, let's just say it's uh, my new website dot something dot com, and that is SSL. You can make it so your main website is covered, but then that one just isn't optimized. So, a lot of different picky things with that. Um, it doesn't excuse bad code. So, I had one website where it used to take about 10 seconds to load the home page really bad because there were just tons of outdated plugins and a lot of issues with it. And when I popped on Cloudflare, it took 0.5 seconds to load. It was 20 times faster. Really awesome. Doesn't really excuse the fact that it still took 10 seconds to load. So if, even though you're able to really speed up your website, you still want to make sure that your code is up to snuff, um, that it's up to date. And there's a lot of different things that you can make sure to make uh, your website faster rather than just popping on Cloudflare and saying, well, that's done. And no more twerking because we want to speed. So for this, there's so many different options that you can choose to make it so that it's more secure, less secure, uh, better performance, less performance. So there's all these different options, and we can talk about those to see which, which is the best um, and which really would work for your website. So what I'm actually going to do is show how to set up a site. Um, I already have an account set up here, and it's just the same exact process if you didn't have an account, where you can go to cloudflare.com and press the sign up button. Um, now, the cool part is that it works with any domain registrar and any hosting. So you don't have to even change your hosting. You stay with GoDaddy, you stay with whatever else you have, and you're able to keep with the same company. So um, here, what I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to type in a new domain that we have. And it goes through and it finds out all of the settings that you have for your domain. So it knows where your email is going to. Um, where your hosting is located, all the different things, and it finds all those records safe. So it will take just a couple of seconds to go through, and it finds, you know, if you're using Google Apps, it's able to find that. Um, if you're, let's just say, hosting some part of your website on GoDaddy and some part on HostGator, they're able to find that. Um, sometimes it doesn't find anything, or it doesn't find anything, or it doesn't find, find everything. Um, so you can always find the records from your current domain registrar or wherever your DNS is located. Um, it's just where all the different records are for you. So, we're almost at the end of the game. The longest part of all of the videos in this game. Um, is the video and music not required anymore? That is actually when you first sign up, you have to watch it. Oh. But with this, you get, I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, I have to mute it. Just like, okay. So, um, all right, so now we can continue setup. So you'll see it's actually going to show all of the records. So it knows it's pointing to these IP addresses. It's a bunch of just different 
geeky stuff in terms of knowing where the um, mail is stored, whatever else it may be. So you'll also see over here that there's a little orange clouds and some are grayed out. So the ones that are orange are the ones that are actually going to be optimized by Cloudflare. So this is the mayor to here services is going to be optimized. Um, the mail is, we don't really need mail to be optimized by Cloudflare. Um, you'll also see that sometimes you can create, um, you do direct, create a direct one. So let's just say if you want to make it so you can access your website but not um, be optimized by Cloudflare. So you, let's just say you're caching your website a bunch and you want to be able to see the non-cached version, you can create what's called a C name, go ahead and direct, and then have that as an alias for the linear computer services. And it will make it so you can go to direct.thedomain.com and it'll be the non-optimized version of your website. So it's really helpful to find out if an issue that you're seeing maybe is caused by Cloudflare or not. So you can say I write it all on these records and we can see. Sure, probably. Um, so it would just be a matter of time for that direct to allow you to see. Um, so you'll see right away it presents you with the free plan. You can also switch it over to the, the paid plans. Um, that client of mine that has way too many hits per day, they actually turn into the business plan. So they get more US protection. Um, they get the SSL certificates, whatever else it may be. They have a lot of different options with that. So we're just going to stick with the free plan here. And I don't think that's going to last time. Did I? Ah. Okay. So you'll see they actually tell us to switch out our name server. So the name servers are set with the domain registrar. Right now it's this right here, and then they want us to switch it over to the cloud side one. So once again, we're not switching our hosting, we're not switching our domain registrar. All we can do, let's just, for, for example, I can log into GoDaddy, and the domain, this domain isn't actually with GoDaddy, we'll just log into something. Ah, all right. Not that one. <laughs> okay. So, no, I think. All right. So, we the names, and we'll figure out with this one right here how we can swap out those main servers. You'll see on GoDaddy they have main servers right here. And I can go to manage. And I'll actually want to swap it out. So, we'll say custom and enter the name servers, and we would just copy and paste the ones that we were doing here. And I'm actually not going to save this because some people not be happy. Um, but if we pressed OK, we'd all be saved right there. And now we're ready to be optimized by Cloudflare. So I'm just going to tell that it was, I did do it. So that beginning part right there where I had hang on, Duke, or whatever, is that unique for a channel or something? Uh, yes. So there's actually a long story about how they chose all the name servers. They wanted it so that they could figure out um, if two people added the same account or the same domain at the same time, how they could know whether or not it's the right person um, that's adding the name servers and taking that domain. Um, you'll see that there's also some fun names like Wozniak, which is attributed to Steve Wozniak, and there's a few other ones that are really cool. Um, but usually it's just Duke and Scott. Uh, uh, <laughs> if only. Um, actually, that's the other thing. Uh, Cloudflare was at the WordPress for WordCamp. Um, so they are obviously cognizant that WordPress is around and they're happy to come to the uh, WordCamp. So, what I'm going to do is actually show some of the different optimizations that you can make once you hooked up Cloudflare. So, you'll see with each of the domains that I have set up, um, I'm able to see the different apps that are connected to that, analytics. Threat control, which is how you can see if spanners and hackers are trying to get onto your website. And then there's other options that you can go back and fix all your DNS again. Or I'm actually going to go into Cloudflare settings here. So on the main settings overview for this domain, you can see they give you quick options to just either turn off security or make it really, really high. And that goes through actually this tab and has a preset of all the different options for those different levels. Um, so if you're not interested in going through the nitpicky uh, settings, you're able to just go through and say, hey, I want my security to be medium, 
and be able to set security leading uh, presets. As well with performance, you can go through and you can say CDN, CDN with basic optimizations, and CDN with full optimizations. So that will actually go through the performance settings and go through and preset all the different options there. But um, for us, what we're going to do, we're going to leave these two, and then we'll, we'll kind of hit with some of these different options here. Now, with Cloudflare, when you upload an image, um, depending on the plan that you have and how long it's been since you've uploaded that image, if you upload another one and try to access it, it'll still show the old one. So what it does is it caches all of your images, obviously, or sometimes JavaScript, whatever settings you have. And if you want to display the new images, the new CSS, the new JavaScript, you actually have to go through and purge the cache here. You do have the option, let's just say, if you don't want to purge everything on your website, which takes a little while, you can just purge one file to just get the URL of that image and be done. So if you're editing your website and it's, all, it's currently optimized by Cloudflare, if you just need to edit one image or one CSS file, whatever else it is, you can just purge here. The other thing you can do if you go back to the main view, I don't think you have to that, but press on here and go to development mode. This will make it so that for three hours, if you make any changes to an image or CSS or whatever else it is, um, those changes show up immediately. So that saves you time um, having to purge cache all the time. Um, makes it a lot easier to, to edit the website. I'm assuming when you do that in development mode and you see all your changes, once the development mode turns back off, it's the same as if you had purged cache. Like, it doesn't go back to where it was cached. It's, yeah. It would, take, well, it would it could do a recache, I'm guessing. Um, that, would, that would kind of defeat the purpose. No, yeah. What it does is it pretty much makes it so, let's just say you, you make a bunch of edits, and then you turn on development mode and you change two files. Um, it'll con continue to show the cache of those other files from before your development mode, but then for those two files, it just has the, the latest version. Yeah, like so, the places of the cache mm -hmm. for so those files. Say that again. I'm, I'm, I'm not a developer. So That's I'm right. When you want to, you know, put up a new blog or something, mm -hmm. you can off the software. So off your own site, it's not put it when you create a new blog post, um, you can just go, so Cloudflare doesn't have any sort of inter interface to be able to add new blog posts or add new files or anything else like that. You just do that on your end. You continue to use your same WordPress dashboard. You, if you access the FTP, you use that same FTP. And then it just is able to scan everything and know when there's a new file or something else like that. So if you just add a new blog post, um, as long as you don't have page caching, which is by default not on, which means that it caches the actual look of the page. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you don't have that on and you add a new blog post, that's going to be just fine. Because it's all new files rather than updated files. Um, that was with um, with that big site again. We had page caching turned on, and it made it to their, their website was just insanely fast. But what would happen is they would put a new blog post out, see uh, a spelling error, and suddenly they would get all these comments about the spelling error being incorrect. And with Cloudflare, even on the business uh, plan, it takes up to five minutes to show the new version. And so they were getting bombarded with people that would say, like, can you spell something wrong for those five minutes? And so we actually ended up turning off the page caching just because of that issue. So um, for the most part, you don't really have to deal with that. It's more, let's just say, if you have an image and you fix it, then you want to purge cache just so that new image shows up. Um, another, another setting that would be wise to turn on is always online. So what it does, let's just say if your server goes down, it can actually post a version of the web page. So it's kind of a lie when they say that it's always online, though, because it's not an interactive version of your website. It basically is just a version of, in a way, just think of it like as a screenshot. So it's a screenshot of your website. So while your server's down, it shows all of your images. It shows your text. But let's just say if somebody tries to add a comment, it's not actually going to be able to work. So always online is still pretty good, though, because if you have lots and lots of visitors at one time, they can at least see the contents of your website, especially if it's just, let's just say, a small business like a plumber. Not many people, unless you have an active blog or something like that, are going to go on and comment or do something interactive. They might be just looking for the contacts page. 
So that would still show up even on the service down. No. That's why you gotta have to do this. Um, Unless you were using like uh, MailChimp, for example. If you had a MailChimp form, that would work because it's posting to MailChimp and not your servers. But any form that would that maybe from a plug-in or something like that, those would all fail. Is there any other questions before I go to the security test? Okay. So there's a bunch of different settings in here. We'll do um, just kind of point out a couple of the cool ones. Um, this one, email address obfuscation. That means if you put your email address on your website, normally what can happen is hackers or spammers can go onto your website and just scan all of the text and find email addresses and then add them to their spamming list. And so with this, what it does is it actually makes it so if a uh, spammer is going through and just scanning everything, it just sees a bunch of letters in the code rather than your email address. Um, so that's definitely something that is on by default and I'll keep it on. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think it Chunk of JavaScript or something, you know how they do it. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of different other ways, but um, even with their, there's an apps section of Word or of, of Cloudflare where you can add on Google Analytics. There's a lot of things that you can do outside of Cloudflare, like add Google Analytics, but they just make it you just press the button and then you can quickly add it. So it's the same kind of thing where it's just aligned JavaScript that you can add in whenever the website is um, Another thing that I don't recommend, but some companies would want is hotlink protection. So let's just say you have a, an image that's on your website and it gets really, really popular, but people are putting it, it on their websites. So it's using your bandwidth, it's using your hosting, right? But they're getting all the benefits and the ad exposure, whatever else it may be. You can actually turn it off where people can only view your images on your website. So um, I usually have that off, but it's something that you can turn on. And I'll jump into the performance settings for the fun stuff in there. So this is the one where you kind of get in trouble if you have the settings turned on all the way and your website isn't perfectly optimized for it. So you'll see this is the one that I was talking about before, the rocket, rocket loader, and this one is in beta, where it automatically loads all uh, JavaScript resources, usually at the bottom of the page. So this one, I usually have it off. Um, if you can have it on, it'll make your website a lot faster. Usually what I re would recommend, turn it on, doesn't work. If your website does funny stuff like refreshes, whatever else may be, turns off. Um, they also have some other beta features like this Mirage, where what it does is um, let's just say if you, there was an image on Cloudflare's website down here and you have to scroll down to it, it won't load the image until you get down to it. So that makes it so, let's just say if a lot of people only access the top part of your website, but not many access the bottom, and that's where all your images are located, it only downloads those images whenever somebody's pulled down. It sits that that first top half of your website is really, really fast. And then as they're scrolling, it goes through and pulls out all of those images. Um, there's also another feature called Polish. And what it does, uh, let's just say if somebody is coming from their mobile phone, they'll load a lower res version of the image on their mobile phone. And then when they're on the desktop, it does a higher res version. So, um, those are all the different settings and the nice part is that they show up automatically. So once you set those name servers that we did through GoDaddy before, all of these settings are automatically showing up on your website. You don't have to add any additional code. You don't have to make any more settings beyond what's right here. So um, we talked a little bit about the SSL before. They do have paid plans. Um, the paid plans that include SSL start at 20 bucks a month. Honestly, it's really worth it. And then from there, uh, if you have the same account, it's five bucks per site on top of the first one. So if you have three sites, it'd be thirty bucks. Um, we talked about the development mode. You can also pause Cloudflare. So if you just still want it for that DNS, where you can manage all of your mail servers, you can manage your subdomains, whatever else it is, you can have it so you can deal with that side, but not have the actual optimizations. Um, certified partners and optimized partners are people who have web hosting, and they have lots of different clients that are already using it, and with certified and optimized partners, um, whenever you go, I guess, how many of you usually use cPanel whenever you're dealing with your host? Okay, so with cPanel, um, with certified and optimized partners, they can actually have a little button, so you just click, hey, here's my email address, and then they automatically sign you up with Cloudflare. 
um, breakthroughs you can. But the benefit is that it's a quicker integration. And um, they usually know what they're doing with Cloudflare, whereas some hosts that aren't certified will just say, you're on your own. So you were saying hosts were certified, but you are, and you were saying you're certified. Mm -hmm. I you're I a host. Host. So I, I have um, two virtual machines that I run with uh, cPanel, and I have like 100 clients that have hosting with me, and then they Probably 90% of them have So it doesn't take too many. So that's just for posts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not for people to set up posts or anything like that. No. Um, because it has to go through, it goes through an API and it depends on what. I'm trying to think. Because I think, like, at least that's how I did it. Um, I think if you you can use your own API to set it up, but I don't think no, I don't think so. So um, this is who I am again. Let me remember to use my Twitter handle. Do you guys have any other questions about Cloudflare? Have it. So they're meant to work together. So Cloudflare is more. Um, the, the DDUS, it can do caching. Um, but for the big website, again, we had a caching plugin on the website and Cloudflare as well. And we have that. Um, and so they work together, and it's best to have both at the same time. Um, so if it wasn't caching, you can do a minify mm -hmm. JavaScript, but you can also do it in Cloudflare, right? Yeah. Um, and you might run into issues if you try doing that on both. Right. Because you're like minifying what you're minifying. Um, I don't think it would do much more. Once you, unless it's like when you have a small Mario, like you can't. If you're any smaller than that, <laughs> you're dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's more. I would um, I would cache actually more through the plugin, um, and then have Cloudflare more as the, the security side, and even um, as the CDN. The making of so that your images are located all throughout the world. No, no, no. So you're, you have that on that major website. You're happy with the speed that provides to you. What's in Cloudflare? What, what was the, what happened to the media site? I thought Cloudflare was responsible. Or do you remember in the spring the whole site was down for days of the attack? So was that Cloudflare's fault? Or? It wasn't Cloudflare's fault. Um, I thought that's what they detect, but they were getting like literally trillions and trillions of requests, like more than normal traffic should go to all of the web. Mm -hmm. It was going to just meet up for like days at a time. Um, so there's a lot of websites that get attacked all the time, but that was just an attack that nobody in the world, because of the tubes of the internet, they really couldn't handle it. Um, so it wasn't their fault. It was just that they, they didn't handle it. You just kind of, they weeded it out and then figured out ways to make it so the traffic wasn't hitting anymore. Then just it. But that's right, Cloudflare does connect to me. I couldn't remember if that was before I even knew anything stuff was. I thought it was Cloudflare, because I remember trying to sign on the site and I thought it was set Cloudflare. Let's find out. I think it's a nice little one. Oh, so it sounds like Cloudflare tried helping after uh, they'd already been attacked. So oh, okay. Cloudflare, who stepped in to help me to get back online. So they really just helped me get back online. So they probably like don't attack me. That's so usually how it works, right? <laughs> they went for the free plan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully not. It's better to use Hatter. Do you have another question? Yeah, I was going to say on that caching thing, I, I use WP Engine, and so, you know, they have advanced caching oh, no. and advanced security, and so, but we use Cloudflare anyway. And so, WP Engine, one of their techs recommended that I just use Cloudflare for the security because they already got wonderful caching on WP Engine side of things. But um, I tried it with and without caching on the Cloudflare level, and it was basically just too fast. So it wasn't too much different. So, just for time's sake, I set up all of our websites on Cloudflare and I just leave the default settings and I like cache on Cloudflare. I mean, it's not like 
it's not hurting anything. Yeah. So it loads just as fast. So, so yeah. So I mean, if you have two layers of cache, as long as Podcloud is able to pull your website from your server, okay, then I mean, I don't really see what the big deal is. Yes, there is. So the big deal about uh, W3 Total Cache and Cloudflare, uh, which we actually had a presentation on like a year ago right. from Joe Plumbing, is that W3 Total Cache's intention is to cache stuff at the server level, and Cloudflare's intention is to cache stuff like uh, after the server figures out what it wants to represent to the to the visitor, it's going to cache that. So WordPress doesn't have to think about like okay, what's in this post and what's in this widget? That's already all cached. So PHP can do its thing like really, really fast with w, W3 total cache on. And then um, with Cloudflare on, it also provides you with images from all of, you know, wherever the nearest data warehouse is and compresses your HTML and moves all of your stuff. And so but if, you, if you go in and you literally touch like every setting on both of them, you will find, you know, Okay, turn this on here and turn it off here and turn it on here and turn it off here. And you can actually optimize so that all of your servery stuff is all cached and happy so that the first time somebody visits that page, it takes a little longer, and then after that, it's like under a second. Like every page loads, the server's done loading, and then Cloudflare is like under a second, I just provided you with stuff from the nearest data warehouse. Um, and so, yeah, if you have. Uh, like more questions about that, um, I'll have to make sure that it's up there. But the uh, presentation from Joe Fleming, he kind of goes over like the combination of those two things together. So if you want to know more about that, his presentation. Yeah, the WP engine they charge. If you turn on a CDN, they charge twelve cents per gigabyte. Um, so with the site we were dealing with, that was a thousand dollars a month. Um, you can actually strike a deal with them. Uh, well, they they just at least that's what they said is that they were like, well, twelve cents per per gigabyte. That'd be nice. Twelve cents per month. So with uh, Cloudflare as a CDN, we were able to make it so on the business line, two hundred dollars a month. You saying WP engine charges if you turn on a CDN? Yeah. Well, if they have an agreement with Max, CDN or somebody, uh, else? somebody else's CDN. Somebody else's CDN. So you pay Max. Oh, uh, so you can put on. If you wanted to do it yourself, but it's not a part of WP Engine's yeah, click yeah, added yeah. CDN process. I think they, they might include some like, basic CDN with some of their basic plans, but with them, since they have an enterprise plan, and they you know, get Um. <laughs> they're all the same. I mean, or I don't know if they're all the same, but I mean, it's it's. There's a lot of different. We have a security problem. Um, I mean, it's, I wasn't here for it. <laughs> One thing that I install is a plugin um, that I completely forget the name of. WordFence. Um, you use WordFence. Security. So there's this plugin that I install. It's called Security Dash Protection. And what happens is when there's a so a lot of people think that when somebody's trying to attack your website, it's literally a 13-year-old you know, boy like typing in the password and like a bunch of different passwords. When in reality, it's just a bot that happened to find out your website was WordPress and brute forces a bunch of different passwords. And if it finds out that it was able to get in, it saves that password into a database, and then later they can go in and hack it or automated to the hacks that are right coming there. So what this plugin actually does is if it can tell that there's a bot trying to access the website, it'll pretend that they were able to get in with a fake password and say, hey, you did it, good job. And then the bot goes away because they think they made it and with this fake password, even though they didn't create it. Um, so I really like this because I've seen actually DDoSs or the amount of people trying to access the website go down um, because they'll 
brute force it for a couple seconds and then be like, okay, I got it, and then walk away. Um, and even if they come back again, the same bot will try and get the same thing, or they'll go to other websites that have admin passwords. So it's mostly bots that are still Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing is more BDOS, so it's where you get a massive amount of traffic to the website. Um, however, if you, unless you're, you have like a really high end website like CNN or something else like that, you're not really going to get a DDoS specifically to your website. It might be more that um, your web host, especially if you're on shared hosting, um, is getting the DDoS themselves. So they might attack all go down websites and get you know, some packets to each. We had one client we launched and they wanted to go down to shared hosting. And I was so happy about it. And they um, went down because of the DDoS the next day. So, um, and that, nothing against GoDaddy. It happens to all the web hosts that they just get DDoS. And so, um, if, if your website goes down and you're in shared hosting because of a DDoS, you really can't do anything except for. But the last case you go down, I just went to upload a coupon one more time. So, I just wanted to go to a website that was hosted. Oh, it's fancy? No, but that wasn't spam. I found 5,000 was spam for the 15,000 Oh, moderated? moderated? Yeah. Cloudflare, I had one website that they were getting 1,000 spam comments every day. Or, I think it was every month. It was spam. It was 18,000 ready for moderation. It was about 1,000. Well, were, they, were they real comments? Were they, they were French. <laughs> oh, well. They were in French. I mean, I've seen enough of the, the Asian languages, but that's been enough to those, but this is yeah, and still got through. Well, the one that I had, it was getting a, a thousand spam, and with one spot player, it was maybe like five per month that we're getting through. Um, so using that honey pot technique where it knows all the bad IP addresses. Is able to... Can you explain the concept of the honey pot? Well, you stick your hand in, you get spun a bunch of honey. Um, so <laughs> basically, um, if Cloudflare is able to tell that there is some sort of a hacker on the network, um, or they actually share honeypots with other companies. Um, there's just a list of all IP addresses. So I can actually go into direct control here. It, it's basically a database that shows all bad IP addresses and why they're bad. So if I go All right, let me, I'm going to log out of the other nice thing. Okay, so you'll see all of these are IP addresses that are being challenged, and I can load a lot more because I can find out why. So if I go in here, it'll say um, it's been seen one time on your domain, seen one time, and um, I think it's only why. Oh, it was, let me see if we can go into Project Honeypot. And this one actually, I don't even know why they stopped this one. Let's try this one. So this is on Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we're, I'm not sure if they can detect it or not, but they can tell that somebody's computer has some sort of malware on it. Um, and they'll ask the person to run an antivirus before they access your website again. Um, which is, I guess, because if you think about it, if they have malware and they'll be injecting uh, spam on the website while they're visiting it or something like this, you know, a bunch of different things that are So you can see with all these, actually, it keeps on saying this visitors manually verified antivirus scan was run. So it sounds like most of these that are popping up are issues where. Um, <laughs> well, and this is really this is the first time I've seen about the which <laughs> really trying to attack. Um, Love to hate you. Well, the uh, honeypot basically a website they put up that's completely unpublished. Not in the same perfect Yeah. 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 Um, and with Cloudflare, you can actually see the origin, like which country the, uh, the threats are coming from. Um, 
in the wire. Well, I figured if they get your IP address slash WP admin admin and it's not you, then you're probably trying to have it. <laughs> um, and you can also see graphs in terms of the this is probably the biggest one. So if you have hosting that's not unlimited or you really care about the actual bandwidth, bandwidth of your website, um, you can see for this website about 120 gigabytes of the save by cloud player. Uh, 140 volts. So it's in a really high percentage of um, bandwidth just because it's been activated like that. Any other questions? You didn't mention um, the SSL options that they have. That's one of my favorite things about Cloudflare, the different SSL options. And it's kind of cool. You like that guy? Good. Um, so what he was saying, like, you know, you have to pay for SSL, but the cool thing about when you pay for SSL with Cloudflare is they actually give you an SSL certificate on the Cloudflare level. So what that does is since all requests to your website, they're not going directly to your server, they go to Cloudflare, and Cloudflare goes to your server. So when you, they have a bunch of different SSL options, but like the most basic one is you can just say turn on SSL, so all, everybody would see HTTPS on their website because they'd be going to Cloudflare and then they'd be loading from Cloudflare back to the client um, over you know, HTTPS. And then, um, but then when it pulls from your server, if there's no certificate on your server, then that back end side is not secure. So what you can do, though, what's really cool and why I really like it is instead of going out and buying SSL certificates, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, no matter how you do it, and you got to give it to your host and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's hosts make it pretty easy. But what I like to do is I just go to Cloudflare, turn on SSL, and then um, I, you can use any SSL certificate you want. It can be completely invalid. Just give that to your host and say, just put this SSL up on the server entry. And then they'll do that. And then Cloudflare, since they're serving up a valid SSL certificate to website visitors on the back end in order to make that connection secure to your website, um, it'll use that SSL certificate that you've uploaded to your host, no matter if it's invalid or not. Because it doesn't matter if it's uh, an SSL certificate in Valid for it to secure the connection. So just um, so it adds credibility. Yeah, it adds credibility to someone who can say it's verified by the one. What's that? Signed. Yeah, it's signed and it says it's valid, but on from the Cloudflare side, they don't. There's it's just Cloudflare pulling from your server directly. So basically, what I do for all of our SSL, instead of telling the client or whoever that is setting a posting for you, know, go buy your SSL server, I'll buy it for you go through all of that, um, we just turn it on on Cloudflare level, and I just create a little self-signed cert with just a single command in the terminal, and then I upload that to our host. And then, um, and then you can turn on SSL that way without ever having a Modo or any of those, and then you just pay the $5 a month. Well, $5 for us, because we did it as a K20. But yeah, it's $5 for each additional site, so basically our SSL certs now just cost $5 a month, and you pay for a month instead of buying SSL that you have to it may simplify things for you. Okay. It may simplify things for you. I, we even had a client that um, her website got put on um, a phishing um, blacklist years ago. And um, so she could not get an SSL certificate. Everyone was rejecting it because they were checking the blacklist. And we made all these petitions to the blacklist company, and they just never responded. So we couldn't get SSL for her site. Um, and so Cloudflare was the only option. And the last one. Or you can find me the name. Okay. <laughs> so her site got hacked years ago. And then got put on a blacklist and it was fixed really fast, but it wasn't fast enough before it got on the blacklist. And then they just it was years ago and it just never got in the movie. You can just make that an option. Um, I actually have it wherever you be. I found out I find out if my IP addresses are being blacklisted or not through any of the different mail servers or mail services. So if you go to mxtoolbox.com, mxtoolbox.com and you put them in the Blacklist tab. You can look up your domain and see if it's on any blacklists that are on the on the web. 
you get a security.net, you can do it too. It'll check multiple different places for you. Okay. I just signed up for Cloudflare and I thought there was a plugin on the internet and you like clearly hacked the kind of plugin. Yeah. So that makes it so you kind of do that and that's about it. So you can, uh, <laughs> well, it does IP, it, rest it restores the IP. That's true. It does that too. So when you, when somebody comments, um, when somebody visits your website, since they're going technically through Cloudflare to your server, Sometimes um, you'll see comments will be listed with the IP address of Cloudflare and stuff like the ad, where it does is it also restores the IP address to show the visitor IP address rather than Cloudflare. And doesn't I think it messes up Google Analytics too. Doesn't it help? Because all oh. the requests look like they're coming from Cloudflare instead yeah. of the real person. So it so it makes it so that Cloudflare can communicate with that plugin and so it'll say this is the one to make that's requesting information so that you have an access uh, uh, like whatever being logged on your server has to be like yeah, the actual requesting instead of just everything that's like a problem. I didn't know. Wait a minute, so that you have plugin fixes that or plugin fixes that? The plugin fixes that. If if you have WordPress and Cloudflare, put the plug in. Not that everything else is gonna look like that. Yeah, everything's coming from Cloudflare and everything to your IP addresses. It would make live analytics very boring. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like here, 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 here. It, and it doesn't have a purge cache feature, but it has the development mode. Like those are the two reasons for the plugin. It restores real IP addresses, and then it has a, um, and then it has a little button for turning on development mode. So that way, when you're developing on a site and you need to see what you're doing. Um, and you don't want to see the cache version just within the site itself. You can turn on development mode and then you can keep working instead of having to leave your site and go to cloud search and all that. Those are the two reasons for the plugin. You can show analytics. I can. Um, let me pull up. They, they see that their analytics are better than, or more accurate than Google Analytics. Um, and that's because they're able to see even people that have JavaScript turned off and like a few different other options. So um, I don't know why that site isn't showing the one that I want to see the analytics. So I'm trying to But it's it's nothing like Google Analytics in terms of trying to see the demographics or any other um, Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Can we maybe just get it? I'm like I can't believe that. You can also turn on the two-factor authentication, which I would recommend. So when you kind of put a demonstration on, um, it's kind of Well, the, the only analytics I can show you are just other websites that I have set up and they're not going to be as exciting as the one that is not showing up. And kind of none of them. I don't know if it's my that's mm -hmm. no. All of my websites are dead. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's showing up, but. Uh, the analytics, it's nice to be able to see the traffic over time. Um, and when you get into page plans, you're able to see more um, real time traffic. But for that, what I would just recommend is Google Analytics. It's truly real time and it shows you the location. And if you have like some stakeholders that you're reporting to, by why you're using Cloudflare to report some of the, this is how many threats were blocked this month. And I mean, it's always like a really high number, too. It's crazy how many. Lots of trying to access your all website all the time, and so it's always a really big number. So it might make you look really cool and make them feel warm fuzzy that, oh look at how many threats we're having blocked all the time. Like it'll make them feel safe. Thanks, Scott. It's like throwing a football back in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was great. And you had a lot more time than you probably would have had I had another presentation. Um, 
So we have to actually skip right on over ideas swap and topic two. Um, let's go ahead and do the idea swap now. Uh, do you guys have anything that you've done cool, creative lately, or read in something that solved problems for you, save you hours of time? Surely you all are doing something cool. I don't know if everyone wants to listen to this uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have, we know the plugin that's called LD Content Manager. Um, it's a luminary plugin content manager, and it's actually a free plugin. And then it's a version of the um, Basically, when you want to, let's just say, manage a, a staff page or something like that, um, you can use custom post types. Probably the like, most efficient way, because it, it, it's built right into WordPress. What we've done is make it so that if you also say you want to manage a staff page for your client or whatever else you want to do, you want to manage your client and add staff members or board of directors, you can set it up within about three minutes or so. So we make it so, um, that make it the best way to show it. You um, get a luminary plugin.com. And then I don't know if you don't have a little link here, just a link to your website. Uh, uh, What you can do is you can create these templates. You say staff members, and you say what you want to manage with the staff. It's the name, the name, the email address, the biography, and then from there you can go into the um, WordPress, WordPress backend, add your staff members, say how you want the staff member page to look, and then you press a uh, or you insert a short code onto the page, and then those staff members appear. So it's a really, really easy and quick way to be able to manage that content um, rather than having to do it. For this one, yeah, we made it so we made it so it shows the names of the people, their photos. It's just a really, really simple way. You can see the the name, the address, and the photo pretty quick. L C like luminary plugins content manager. Anyone else cool plugin or something that you're into at the same time? Somebody else to know about that. Of the, I gotta maybe I'll send it to Chris uh, if I'm on TV. Right, he makes like a six-minute video about people. Sure. I got, did you guys watch that video where he was making about somebody sending him uh, like? It was, it made sense. Like, I used to work at a tech publication. People would be like, if you're going to write about my app, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, no. What am I going to write? Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so he, he got somebody who, like, wrote him, uh, you know, it says, you're going to share my plugin with your community. And so he just, like, made a video about how, no, that's not how they put it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can send you a paid version if you want to review it. You need to send it. Um, what was something cool that I found? I found, where was it? Um, so I'd have to look it up now. I'm sure it was the first thing that popped up on Google. But if you have, uh, like, a logo or something, but it's just, like, a PNG file, and then you want to, like, let's say you wanted it to be, like, on this wall, right? You try to blow it up and it would get all blurry. Um, but you're not, you know, an artist or anymore. Um, but <laughs> I'm not an artist. So I wanted like a vector graphic of this image because if you know anything about vector graphics, it's that they grow and shrink and you can make them the size of the building and it wouldn't matter, there'd be no like, blur anything wrong with it. Um, so <clears throat> you think the company that I'm working for, seven years old, they would have a vector graphic image of their logo, this logo here. Uh, they did not. 
but there is now a service on the internet where you can go and take and upload your logo, and it will convert it to vector graphics for you. Um, you can get two for free, so as long as you only need the logo, then you're set, and it doesn't cost anything. Uh, and then if the if the process um, process like if your logo is really complicated or there's lots of colors or something, um, you can then request a professional to retrace your logo and recreate it into the vector art so that you can print banners or make a company building logo or something like that. Uh, so I thought that, that was really. I mean, in like two minutes, I was like sitting there like emailing the uh, designer that does all this stuff. I'm like, how do you not have a logo? Um, and of course, he's really busy, so it's a few days back and forth with chatting. And I'm like, I'm just going to do one. And sure enough, I mean, you just go out and like, drag your logo up, and so, uh, you know, I have your email address, and then we can send you a few spam messages. And I got my uh, EPS document back and sent it over, and I was making a, I remodeled my office, so I was making a wall decal. Um, another cool thing that I found, I guess, which is there's companies that make these like wall decals, so you don't actually have to like paint your wall or have somebody come drill it. Um, you can actually just get these like decals and um, you can install them on a the wall and they look awesome. So I'm um, going to have a giant fan sided logo like three feet by three feet um, on my wall. Where does that work with that logo? What's that? Uh, yeah. yeah, it works great. How did you pay it up? What's the name of the site? It's called fansided.com. It's a sports site. So. Oh, the logo oh, of the that's what I'm saying. So vector graphics are resolution independent. Yes. And they're awesome. Yes. Um, convert into It's actually a way to put it. was this one. So it's called vectormagic.com, and it looks really awful. <laughs> Trust me. The first thing I thought was, oh, God, run. <laughs> um, yeah. But after I browsed through on the side, I figured out that they were legitimate to do exactly what it says. Um, and you can just click upload, and it'll actually do the conversion for you, and it'll let you zoom into both images so you can see just like you have here. Um, like what happens if you zoom in versus if you zoom in. Um, the vector graphic. So it gets all blurry if you don't convert the vector. Uh, so they let you see what your graphics going to look like before you even put in your email address. So you upload your image and you're like, you zoom in and you see it's all like nice and fine. All the edges are there. And then you zoom into your graphic and it looks awful. Um, and then you put in your email address and you get two for free. And then after that, obviously, they are, they built the service for you. So you pay money for it. I thought it was really cool. What about SVG graphic images and websites? Uh, be very careful with them. Um, um, not all browsers support SVG graphics. Um, in the store, it's well known to completely break your SVG graphics. Um, but besides that, like if you're building a mobile website or um, you know that your target audience is younger, um, then you'll probably be pretty safe. We use vector graphics for uh, shot charts. So, like in the NBA, that like certain players shoot uh, percentages from different parts of the court. You can actually see that on um, the website, and they pull that information off and put it in the blog articles if they write. Um, so that's what we use it for. Uh, and then there's actually, if you get really, really tacky, there's ways to convert SVG images into PNG graphics, um, which we'll have to do at some point because you can't share, like, on Twitter, or uh, if you go to the websites, like, there's usually, like, a little button next to the image, like, share this image on Twitter because it's really cool and then it goes viral. But you can't do that with SVGs. SVGs is a bunch of, like, HTML and code that draws an image for you. Um, so you'd have to convert that to something you could share on Twitter. So that's the only kind of, like, downside is there's no, like, right-click save as button or anything like that. So I guess that could be a positive. I guess if you made all of your graphics and photography thing, SVGs, um, with a watermark on it, nobody would really be able to, like, nobody could come to your site and just, like, grab all of your images off and see them. Um, so, yeah, so that was my one cool thing that I found. Anyone else? Nothing? Brian, nothing with you? Um, 
found a kind of new, someone made an um, SEO um, site that will be a resourcing site. Do share. So is there like a site to check See how affordable my site is. So you just throw in your URL to check up and then do the report. Um, not as specific as some of the paid ones I've seen, but um, they've been improving it and trying to go after it. And kind of using some. And it takes probably a minute or two to fully run the report. Uh, it'll start with no description for keywords, which we will go into the What's that? And it's different for sure that And it will just take the first whatever paragraph that you can dial the main report on one page. So they completely switched Not really though. I mean if your description if it was the set like if you had something through the every paragraph that didn't perfectly have the phrases that you want in search engines. That's all. That's less about SEO and more about click. It doesn't actually affect your SEO ranking. The design right. doesn't affect your ranking. Right. That keyword's test, that pass. Yeah. If those are your keywords, WordPress, multi-site, unlimited use of our website. Oh, it's no developer. Now. <laughs> keyword usage. Uh, keywords are not included in my title. No, I think I'm actually doing that. H1, yeah, this is my home page, so didn't really. Uh, put a whole lot of thought into the H1 and H2 tags. So basically what it's saying there is just like there is a certain, um, what would you say, formula to using header tags on your website so that it is optimized for SEO. I'm definitely not concerned with that about my home page. If you look at my home page, you'll see it's all about just looking awesome right away. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the only thing. That, and loading really fast. Um, and having a responsive slider, that was really important. So it looks like it's getting put on. Mm -hmm. Responsive slider? Yeah. Let's see how the slider responded to uh, the website getting smaller. Well, Seth, we can get some content. So does it actually shrink down the images? No, it is actually cutting them off. That's pretty cool, but it's still one But the video is actually shrinking. That's a responsive. Video, video that I didn't buy, as you can see from the like stock photo that was <laughs> pulling up there. Um, but yeah, so if this is more about navigation than it is about SEO, then I probably should use something besides my home page. Hopefully, it's some door developer on it. I've been moving, migrating away from the word developer in my um, about me because that's not really where I want to be. So I tend to write my about me's about where I where I think I should be or where I want to go um, instead of where I happen to be out like right in a second because it's not going to be valid to me. Um, what do you do instead of developer? Now? What do you evangelist or ambassador? Of they sound very official. Yeah, they are. <laughs> the yeah. I'm a WordPress ambassador. Come to me if you have a problem. 
Uh, so it looks like some of the stuff is more um, now we're getting into like performance, right? Yeah. Or not now. Uh, which is important now because Google is going to start, if they haven't already, moving down in SEO just because your page doesn't load fast enough. And they have to notify searchers if the website is flat. Yeah, we really? just did that, yeah. <laughs> so if you look at it flat, so it's basically just, just flat, which I really hope somebody's going with that here. Um, when somebody searches for that and finds it on Google, it'll say, the Budweiser website was Flash not too long ago. It may have changed by now. It used to be my, like, want to see what your website would look like? Flash, here you go. Flash, okay. I updated my Firefox to be now I just wrote uh, articles about food books. So my little uh, excerpts at the bottom. Oh, how come there is that was, was Yeah, because on the home page, I have a lot of CSS that didn't need to be on all the pages. So I just wrote it in line so that the uh, CSS stock is actually faster. Page looks a little quicker. Honestly, when you go to like optimize your website, just following like a live slow score or something like that is possible, but it's not the best way to get your page to load fast. Um, you have, like, those are all like bots and engines. They're not smart enough. They're not as smart as a human being, so you have to make educated like decisions about what you're doing when you're making changes. A lot of people and um, developers, I would say especially, are like, when you live slow score is slow, my website looks fast. I really don't care what your Y slow score is. Find a person who visits your website and goes, oh, this Y slow score, it is awesome. Nobody cares. Speaking of, you can see the switch it in our outline. Yeah. You want to touch on that? Um, he wants to maybe present next month, so I don't know, like, is it thunder or anything? Well, so don't bog down your server. Yes. Uh, well, and I was just doing this on my son's website. So my parents and my wife both take pictures from their phone, right? Um, and I upload them to my son's website to keep his blog up to date. Um, so that we have pictures and stuff for him. And so, like, these images from the phone are like five meg in size, right? The website does not need these things. But when you upload to WordPress, WordPress just goes, well, we'll just go ahead and keep that for you. Um, and what the VP Smush it is basically going to do is resize that on the fly for you based on your settings to something that's more manageable on the server. Um, this doesn't matter if you have a website that's 10 pages and has a thousand photos. Not going to matter. If you have a website that's got 100 pages and 10,000 photos and you're keeping the original source of every photo up there and they're all five meg when you upload them, 
that's a huge cumbersome process for your server to handle. Um, the other thing that's not as related to the image size is just having more files on your server is actually hurting your performance. Um, so if you have a website that's got 50,000 images, you should not be hosting those images on the web server because your web server is going to slow to a crawl. In fact, most of the shared hosting contracts mention something about maximum number of files. The fact that you read my blog post about Google, you will find out that I mistakenly read the word unlimited and thought, hmm, I should be okay, and then wasn't. Um, so I have a site that they, every time I log in, warning, you are approaching the maximum number of files on your website. Um, so so I, mis I misread the outline. I thought it was saying, don't use Swift and bog down your server. So you're basically oh, no, no. Yes. You you just use it. So there's no more fun. Huh? Well, the other thing is this bandwidth, right? Like, it uses more of somebody else's bandwidth to download these huge images that you have on your website if you're not using it switch it. And it also takes additional bandwidth, like you can upload the images. Um, so I don't know if Smush it does it or not. We'll have to find out from Corey. But um, uh, it's not called. There's another plugin that does this for you, but it uses Flash um, to resize your image before it leaves your computer. So it resizes your image. And then it sends it up to the server, so your server never sees your five megabits. It doesn't take you five minutes to upload because you're on some Wi-Fi connection. It resizes it and then sends it, so you only have a 900k and then you play it. So you save like lots of bandwidth. Under a meg, that's fairly a background or like a, something larger. Awesome. Well, it is 8.10. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, then we'll do some networking. I will clean up and then we'll do it again. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming. Bye.